themselves turned into refugees. Ah, ah, ah. Motorbike. Does that make sense? Motorbikes. They escape. So rude. Hi, hello, I'm Louise Quick, I'm a professional history nerd, and this is Quick Histories. In light of the death of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh last week, I thought that this week it would be interesting to uncover a history fact all about him. I don't know about you, but for me, being the millennial that I am, Prince Philip was always the tall old chap who stood beside the Queen. However, it turns out that before he was tall, old and stood beside the Queen, he had a life. <laughs> He had quite a traumatic life in places, and a life that started with a dramatic boat trip and some oranges. What am I talking about? Let's find out. Prince Philip was in fact kept in an orange crate when his family, who were part of the Greek royal family, fled their home country amid a political revolution. See, Prince Philip didn't become royal and didn't become a prince when he married Queen Elizabeth. No, he was born into royalty. He was born in 1921, Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark, or technically Prince Philippos of Greece and Denmark. I hope I'm saying that right. Philippos? Philopos? Philippos. His mother was Princess Alice of Battenberg. Not the cake, sadly. There she is. And his father was Prince Andrew of Greece and Denmark. 1921. It's bonkers to think that little baby Philippos was born just after World War I. He missed it by less than three years. However, unfortunately, instead, he was born during the Greco-Turkish War, which saw Greece at war with their neighbours, Turkey. In fact, when Philip was born, his father, Prince Andrew, wasn't there. He was busy off leading the Greek troops in the war. However, about one year later, Greece lost the war, and they lost it badly. Without going into too much detail, the loss resulted in tens of thousands of people, Greeks and Armenians mostly, I think, being killed, and the upheaval of more than one million Greeks who found themselves turned into refugees. Like I said, it was, it was bad. It was so bad, in fact, that in September 1922, a coup d'etat saw a military dictatorship seize power of Greece. And if you know anything about military coups, you'll know that this was not good news for the Greek royal family. The people of Greece, understandably, they wanted somebody to blame for the atrocities that had occurred during the Greco-Turkish War. And it didn't take them long until they pointed the finger of blame at their own royal family. Prince Philip's uncle, the King of Greece, was forced to abdicate and then exiled. Meanwhile, things for Philip's father, Prince Andrew, got, um, they got complicated. Long story short, he was court-martialed and then also exiled. But I think I'm right in saying that there was a real fear that more drastic action would be taken if Prince Andrew and his family didn't get out of Greece very quickly. I realise that being exiled means that you leave the country, but they had to get out of the country quickly for fear that people would change their minds and decide they were being too lenient with the punishment. So as soon as they could, Prince Andrew and his wife, Princess Alice, gathered their five children, which was their four daughters and then their son, Prince Philip, who at this point is still only about 18 months old. They gathered a few belongings, any belongings they could, and they fled from Greece. They escaped on a ship called the HMS Calypso, which was provided to them by Britain, where Prince Andrew's cousin just happened to be the king, King George V. Side note, at this point, and probably still today, all European royals were related, pretty much. Uh, and yes, this does mean that Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth were distant cousins. Keep it in the family and all that. Once on board, it's said that they fashioned a cot for Prince Philip out of a box that was used to carry oranges. I'm assuming they took the oranges out first, uh, but who knows? Maybe, maybe citrus fruit make a really comfortable bed. I've personally never tested the theory. If you've ever slept on citrus fruit, comment below. From Greece, they traveled to Italy and then on to Paris, where they settled for a while. 1920s Paris, very cool. But really, Prince Philip never had, like never really grew up with a proper home as such. Don't get me wrong, the press and biographers and writers often like to sell this idea of Prince Philip as the impoverished prince. But realistically, the Greek royal family, they, they did okay for themselves. One benefit of being related to most of European royalty means that there's lots of people you can call on for help. I just think it's fascinating that the drama and 
arguably trauma, of Prince Philip's early childhood is so reflective of the political chaos that was kicking off across lots of Europe at this time. Also, it's such a powerful image, isn't it? This image that at the centre, or at least just amid all of this political upheaval and revolutions, there's this tiny baby just dozing away in a cot that's been made for him out of an orange crate, blissfully unaware of all of the politics or even what politics is. So there we go, that's why and how the late Prince Philip fled Greece in an orange crate. There's so many more historical nuggets I could give you just about his childhood. Believe it or not, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Thank you for watching. If you like this fact, please give it a like, share it with your friends and family, and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. Also, if you really like this video, remember you can show your love by buying me a coffee on my Ko-fi page. It's just like leaving a tip, and all the contributions go back into making more of these videos. Otherwise, I'm off to lie on a bed of citrus fruit and see how comfortable it is. History fact.